Yo. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Uh, going good, man. Watching a little college football. That sounds well, good, don't it? <laughs> long time no see, man. How's it feel to be 1-0? Oh? <sighs> you know, when you're on top of the mountain, you know, <laughs> they expand the playoffs so more teams can get in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah. So I, I assume a lot of people want to talk about that, but I'm more interested in these week one games, Shane. We can talk about the playoff yeah. for months and months, and they're not even expanding this damn thing till 2026, it sounds like. So what game are you most looking forward to? Now that your balls are one and you don't have to worry about being stressed. You, yeah. We don't have to worry about you not showing up for the pod <laughs> for a couple days because Tennessee <laughs> lost to some joke of a team. So now that we got that behind you, what what game are you most looking forward to? And uh, if you need a second to think about it, I'll just tell you mine. I, I, I went, no, okay, I got mine, man. Still, Florida, Utah. That it, mm. it, it comes down to the youth. I want to see just. I want to see how close Florida is to being back to relevance. You know, right? Uh, you know, I've, I'm on record. We put our score predictions out. I think that Florida Gators shocked the nation. And uh, so that's probably the one I'm most intrigued. But honestly, I want to see them all, man. I just want to see what each and every team looks like. We've got to see Vanderbilt. We've got to see Tennessee. We've got to see Missouri. So it, it's, you know, by the end of this week, we're going to know what every program is bringing to the SEC this year. Yeah, for me, Shane, I want to see South Carolina and Georgia State. And not because I think it's going to be a ball game. Like, that's, that's like a popular – take now this mm -hmm. week but i i think it's because georgia excuse me south carolina is going to beat the hell out of georgia state set up so yeah. one hell of a matchup next week in arkansas but then that other game cincinnati arkansas that's another one people got circled i mean i can't wait to watch it either but again i think arkansas is just gonna just destroy cincinnati so i don't know yeah. if it's gonna be much of a ball game either but it's gonna set up just one of the games of the week, it, not only in the SEC, but in the country week, too. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and don't forget, I mean, there's a little rivalry up there with Mississippi State and Memphis. I think that's going to be a hell of a matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of a revenge game. You know, if you weren't familiar with it, do some research on last year's matchup between these two programs. Um, I, I think that's a good one. Obviously, Oregon, Georgia, um, you know, defending national champ. I, it, it's going to be nice seeing them again down there in Atlanta. And, you know, do they repeat? And, and is there any doubts? I, I think that's one of the, the, the I guess, one of the lingering things is, is there a hangover with the Georgia Bulldogs? And do they let a team like Oregon stay in it? I don't think that's possible. Um, you know, we said this on the pod uh, yesterday, or the one that came out this morning. I just, I, I don't think it's going to be a ball game, but, what does the what does the defending national champs look like? I can't wait to hear Jonathan. Who, who's Hawaii playing this week? What Hawaii ball game are you going to? <laughs> oh, I have no idea. But it was fun watching Vanderbilt play. It was like Vanderbilt was playing the JV team out there. They're huge compared is, to the little Hawaii team. Is that now your adopted team, Vanderbilt? No. <laughs> <laughs> Vanderbilt doesn't give me up at 6 a.m. in the morning. That's the Tennessee balls only. So what? Yeah. That's not true. This week, I'm, I'm with Shane. I have to lean that way. I'm so excited to see all the teams. Like, I just want to see who we got, you know? I want to see what's the new roster going to look like. What, what are they all going to come out with? I say the highlights would definitely be South Carolina. I really want to see Florida play Utah. But other than that, it's like I want to watch all of them. Hmm, man, this is some boring answers by you guys. A every game, I, I, I don't even know how I'm going to... Every game, <laughs> every game, Mike. You can you just wait until it was, it was a long offseason. There is... Uh, because John's on to something. There's, there's storylines coming from all these programs. Hell, even A&M, you know, we finally got us a quarterback named. You, you Auburn, you got Brian Harson up against the ropes. His, his saving, his life preserver is no longer down there. What does it look like <laughs> on the plains? So... I mean, there's just there's so many narratives and storylines across the SEC this year, uh, and, and some of those are going to get answered week one. And you know, I, I, how far along are some of these? How how far behind is is uh, LSU? You know, you you came out with score prediction having them Knowles beat the LSU Tigers, Mike. I mean, 
Uh, are they going to prove you wrong, or 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 is SEC Mike on it? So I I, I don't know. I just I, I am really intrigued with all the games, and unfortunately, you're not going to be able to watch it all because here's here's the thing that drives me nuts, Mike. And and we've been rolling this thing out since Thursday. There's no reason we should have multiple SEC games on at the same time. You know, we've got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday to get a game out, a week opener, I think they should have done a little bit better with scheduling, but, you know, yeah. I'm not in control of that department. Well, at least you got my, Sunday. Go ahead. My favorite part is to see who's been selling snake oil. You know, which one of these coaches is like, oh, the program's improving, and then they show up and it's just a bust. And it's like, nah, he's going to get fired. What what score would concern you, Shane, with uh, you got A&M winning the West? If yeah. there's – how many? How many they got to win by against Sam Houston before you get nervous? I'm not. You know the thing with me, Mike, with Texas A&M is I don't want to see a close game at half. Um, yeah. there, there seems like you know every year there's one or two, and I'm not saying Sam Houston's going to be it, even though Jimbo's talking them up and how great they are. There, there, there's no reason this should be a ball game at the end of the first quarter. There's no reason this should be a ball game at halftime. There should, you know, there should be ample opportunities for young kids. I mean, because that's what they're doing week one here. This is a great opportunity to to, to work on that competitive depth because, you know, I really do think Texas Stadium has an opportunity to make a run. And you, you do that by giving your guys an opportunity to play in the second half. And if you make it a ball game, which, I'm, again, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but, you know, if you're going to be a national championship contender – you don't play with your food. You come out here and eat. Yeah. How impressive was Missouri though last night? Because oh yeah, I don't I don't want to say a popular upset pick. But a lot of Mizzou haters they thought Louisiana mm-hmm. Tech would give them a ball game, and I thought Brady Cook didn't even, you know, he didn't play poorly, but he didn't play that well. But still, they they just right. destroyed Louisiana Tech like we thought they would. And mm-hmm. then Luther, Luther Burden. I mean, how often does a five star not live up to the hype? Uh, he looked like the best player on on the roster in his first career game. Yeah, there's not too many kids on Missouri's roster that Alabama's like, man, we really missed out on that guy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, he is he is going to be a force to be reckoned with. This kid is a is a, a phenom. He is a true athlete, and uh, that that state loves him. And they gave him plenty. Of, that's what I liked about it is they gave him so many opportunities to touch the ball, playing wildcat running the ball, catching the ball, you know. I, I'm surprised he's not on special teams. He's he's just – he is a Swiss Army knife, and he will be – he will be the – you know, because I, I will say Coach Eli has a has a tendency to lean on one guy, and typically it's – you know, it's been running backs. But now, enter Luther, and, and I think this is his – this is his, his new toy that he's playing with. And I, and I just – I loved it. It looked great. I love this defense, especially the secondary. Man, they were swarming to the ball. I, I, I mean, sometimes it looked like there were 14 defenders out there. So I will tell you this, man, one of the unsung heroes is that secondary. And this game really should have been by more. I, I know you look at the scoreboard and you're like, well, man, Mizzou blew them out. Man, they should be, they should be at least three or four more touchdowns on the scoreboard, in my opinion. Yeah, the only disappointment for us with Missouri last night, Shane, we – one of our listeners sent us the Bur- Luther Burton chips, but they didn't arrive in time for me to drive down and come down. Man, we could have been watching on them chips, watching the game. Uh, man, what a time to be alive, Shane, when, when freshmen got their own brand of chips here. I uh, know. Uh, and it's yeah. all legal, you know? Me and Mike watching the game together, and he showed me pictures of these chip bags. And, like, and I was a little suspicious, you know, like, <laughs> did he really get them after he went after? Did he leave those there so he can have them off himself? So, I'm going to have to try them chips, so maybe one of these days I'll get some up here, Mike. <laughs> Well, what team we haven't hit on? And I'm not putting them on upset alert, even though I do it basically every uh, season opener. Kentucky, Shane, playing Miami of Ohio. Yeah. Hell, some of these Kentucky people are, are touting this up as, as Miami is this good team, but mm-hmm. I ain't, I ain't buying it. I don't care how many Gabberts they got down there. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you interested to see from Kentucky tomorrow? Uh, who's who's my receivers? You know, I I think. We're, we're putting Will Levis on this Heisman race. Well, you you got to have targets. And uh, obviously, we we had a lot of great talent leave the league last year. And and I think, you know, who's, who's the next who's the next chapter? Who's the next, 
you know, re- talent receiver up there in Kentucky. Um, also, I want to see this defense, you know. Everybody's talking up the defensive front, these these linebackers. But how does that de- how does that defense gel? Because, again, there was a lot of games last year that Kentucky should have won, and it wasn't because of the arm of Will Levis. It was because the defense wouldn't, you know, didn't help that offense by keeping them in the game. Now, let me ask you this, because this is something that I think all fans do. We Even we were doing it last night, Shane, with what, we had an eye on that West Virginia Pitt game, mm-hmm. and you were saying you want Pitt to win because yes. I want Tennessee to be the ranked team. Yep. If, if you're Kentucky – do you want Florida to pull off the upset, and then that would likely make them rent for the mm-hmm. Week Two showdown, or do you want Florida to struggle and maybe you know maybe they've just not adapted to Billy Napier, maybe Anthony Richardson's overhyped, and you go in and you take advantage of a down Florida? Which way do you think Kentucky fans are leaning? Uh, I, I think Kentucky fans don't care. I think they would. I honestly think they would prefer them to lose and, and struggle out of the gate. Because, you know, that is an advantage I, we talked about here in the offseason of playing Florida so early is, is the possibility that this team hasn't found their identity. Kentucky knows what they're doing. They know what they're doing on offense. They know what they're doing on defense. You know, they're, one of, they're going to be one of those programs just like every year that comes out of the gate swinging and, and well prepared. So I think that's an advantage for Florida to struggle. So if I were to guess, Again, not as a you know as a Kentucky homer, but I would assume that you'd want the Florida Gators to struggle mightily against Utah and kind of just say, "Oh well, this is going to be one of those seasons." Well, let me ask you this because this is something I don't, I've not heard anyone talk about. Even we have neglected to talk about it. But Ole Miss, I still have no damn clue what to expect from this team. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they've named a starting quarterback. I've been kind of I've been driving back so. I, to my knowledge, they've not named a starter. And I'm not sitting here saying they're going to struggle with Troy, but all we've heard all off season is, well, hell, the first, aside from Kentucky, the first six, seven games is a cakewalk. Yeah. They're, going to, they're going to be six and one at worst. You know that's got to be filtering down in that locker room. It's got That's got to be the message uh, on campus. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not, again, I'm not saying putting them on upset alert here, but if they have not solved this quarterback situation, you know, most people read into that. They, they just don't have a good quarterback. But, you know, maybe they, maybe they've got two outstanding quarterbacks. I don't know. But right. if, if they struggle, if they have some turnovers and all these moving pieces don't come together, are we overlooking the fact that, hey, just because they got an easy schedule right out the gate, that we can't automatically chalk them up to be 5-1, and 6-0, and oh, whatever? Well, and a lot of people already have. And that's what that's what drives me nuts because, you know, this, this team – for me, has the most question marks besides maybe LSU. Uh, the, all the new new faces that come in. Now, there is talent on that roster, Mike, and, and we're going to see some of it. We're going to see glimpses of it. I think, you know, I think there's improvement at the running game. I, I love the tight end there. But there's, there's those question marks with everything else. And even your quarterback, we've, we've not had really clarity on who it is. But, you know, I, I think – Kiffin knows exactly who he's rolling out, and I think he's known it for a long time. He's just he's just keeping it close to his vest. So I'm not so much worried about the quarterback play, but how how can you not love this old Miss schedule right out of the gate? You talk about all these new faces trying to get acquainted and and, and play together. Well, you, you've got one of the easiest. Not want to say the easiest, but one of the well, yeah, let's call it the easiest <laughs> openers. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you look at it. You go up the street. You got Arkansas playing Cincinnati and and Texas A and M and Alabama and you know right out of the gate. So mm-hmm. it's like you know Ole Miss is kind of easing into this, and if if they take advantage of that and not lose their way and not think that they can just steamroll everybody they play, and and I think Ole Miss will be all right. But again, we're we're get it's all guesses for me, man. Yeah, what about Arkansas, Shane? I'm sure we got plenty of Arkansas fans in here. Mm-hmm. Uh, how fired up are you for this game, and, and I, kind of, what do you need to see from the Razorbacks? Yeah, because people are people when they see Cincinnati, they think of the the college football playoffs last year. You know, they they have no idea that this roster is depleted, that it's not the same Cincinnati that was that was playing last year. Now it's a good coach ball program, and I'm sure it's going to be a hell of a game and a good test for Sam Pittman and the boys, but 
you know, Arkansas Razorbacks, you, you want to talk about drinking the Kool-Aid, Mike. We've been doing it all off season. We, we're convinced that te- that they are in the upper echelon of the SEC West, and you you don't get there and struggle with a team like Cincinnati. So I want to see if, if you know, it's, like I said on the pod, it's, it's time to put up or shut up. Like if, if you are here to play and compete and you've got a Heisman candidate at quarterback – you know, you got all these returning starters. You got uh, returning coordinators. Mike's got them touted as the best in the country. You know, it is time to to put your big boy pants on and go out and beat the shit out of a team like Cincinnati. So that's what I want to see: just total domination from start to finish. And we got Steven in here. I added him. You got Let's see what he's he's got. A, he's an Arkansas man. Hey, cousin Shane, Mike. Hope y'all are doing well. <laughs> Yeah, it good, man. Yeah, man, it's beautiful down here in Little Rock right now. It's starting to cool off, but it was raining in Fayetteville earlier today. But uh, I looked at y'all's picks for the Arkansas and Cincinnati game, and man, I appreciate the love. Both y'all got us winning by at least two scores, and uh, so that's that's got to make you nervous, man. Get up, <laughs> <and be honest laughs> <with y'all. laughs> Mike. I'm undefeated right now. Hey, oh. hey, but hey, but for real, guys, I, I appreciate y'all showing some love and shed, you know using your platform to let everybody know what Arkansas is about. You know, during the Chad Morris era, nobody had their head hung high. But now that we've got, you know, Coach Pittman in here in the Boss Hall, it's a, you can feel it. I know we're a small state. You know, we only got about 3 million people. But that's a hell of a lot of people back in one program. And uh, mm-hmm. like I said, I appreciate the love. Hope everybody has a good Labor Day weekend. And Maybe we can catch up soon. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah. You, you got a score prediction real quick, Steven? Man, 34-28. It's going to be closer than what everybody else says. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I appreciate you, Steven. Hey. You must got family up there or something. A lot of the, <laughs> lot of the folks down here have it still set at minus seven. But uh, I've seen minus six. I've seen minus six and a half. So, man, it's it might be closer than what people expect. Mm, six, nice. six, six and a half touchdowns. Yeah, <laughs> Mike, how can you sleep? You know, with all this, all this SEC action, Mike, I'm having trouble. I'm going to be up all night just just <laughs> watching hot videos. <laughs> you know, I love watching the the fan bases troll each other. You know, I get caught up in a few of them. It's it's just college football passion is real, and 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 it's just it's just so exciting, man. I'm I, I just can't wait. How many how many times did you watch that? Uh... I believe it was Darnell Wright, Tennessee offensive lineman with the, with the flop there. I mean, that was pretty funny, wasn't it? I watched it about 20 times, Mike. And, you know, I really did have – that was one of the last things I watched before I went to bed. And, uh, you know, it's funny because he came out, and I don't know if you saw this tweeted later. He was uh, showing what that kid was, was doing. You know, he's trying to roll him and twist his leg and all this stuff. You know, he had some video. So, you know, I, I get the – a lot of people – this is the one thing. The Ole Miss fans came at me hard, Mike. They, they said, you know, Uh-oh. isn't this the same guy that, that Michigan complained about, you know, the the, the fake, you know, go yeah. up there. But th- the fact of the matter is it's two different things, man. You know, if, if you get pushed and it was a personal foul and you played it, yes. But if you just fall down to stop the <laughs> clock, I mean, that that's what drives me nuts. There's, like, no contact at all. But maybe – Maybe I do got my orange glasses on my. Looks <laughs> like we got Kevin in here. Let's see, let's see what he's got for us. Man, I ain't going to better stay up late tonight because I'm going to get to bed so I can hit the gym and you know, get up and, and, uh, and uh, eat chicken wings tomorrow. But uh, I just want to say I don't think there's going to be an SEC team that has a close game tomorrow. I think it's going to be blowouts all the way around. Yes. That's what I like. Absolutely. That's what I want to see, man. I just want to see them steamroll all the SEC teams. You know, because that's what you want. Even in bowl games, man, you just you, you want to see just SEC dominance. And, and, you know, we didn't get it last year. And I think this season over, I think there's a real shot that SEC wins every game they play. Mm. I think you're right, yeah. man. Well, I tell y'all what, y'all have a great night. This is my first time here, man. And go dog. Let's repeat. Yeah. Hey, real quick. Hey, real quick. You still on? I am. What's the, what's your score prediction for the Georgia Bulldogs and them Oregon Ducks? I say forty two to ten. <laughs> mm, <laughs> right on, love it. Oh now, oh. Well. <laughs> Y'all guys take care, man. Y'all have a good night. All right, you too, buddy. You, Kevin. Now the only thing I got for Georgia though, Shay, mm-hmm. and it, I mean it's the same damn thing we've been saying. I you get tired of talking about football. I want to watch football. 
but you know everyone's patting them on the back, defending champions. I get it. They're, they're heavy, heavy, heavy favorites to win the East. They should be. Yeah. But you know maybe any let up here. I, maybe you, you do away with that. The fact that Oregon is, I think they're a top fifteen or whatever. Even though mm-hmm. we don't respect them as top fifteen, but nope. that's that's where it currently is. So that should be plenty of mo- motivation, all the motivation they need to get up for that game. It is in Atlanta, but again, is that a bigger deal for Oregon, who's – I can't remember the last time they played there. Maybe Bo Nix freshman year. I think that was in mm-hmm. Atlanta. But Georgia – I mean, hell, Georgia's in that building two, three times a year, it feels like. So any <laughs> any uh, you know thoughts that maybe they'll they'll kind of just not, not have it honed in, so to speak? No, I, I really don't, Mike. And, and you know, this – Given the fact that Oregon is ranked, um, you know, yeah. that, that this isn't – you know, some of these teams that – we watched that West Virginia pit game, and, you know, I think there's something to say when you go into a, a ball game and you, you just expect to win. Yeah. And I'm not saying that Georgia is not expecting to beat Oregon, but, you know, there is that – there are those talking heads out there, you know, saying that Oregon has an opportunity to win this game and Georgia is going to be hungover like we talked about. I just – I don't know. When you got uh, the main thing for me is is Stetson Bennett, uh, your your captain, is coming out. You know, he, here he is, his tenth year senior. You know, he's got an ample opportunities to start this season off on the right. Yeah, I think you hear you heard it with Kirby Smart down there at SEC Media Days. They know that there's that potential of of overlooking programs and starting out sluggish, but. I just don't think we see that. Uh, you, you know, we didn't see them jump into the portal looking for anybody. I think they're confident with what they have. And um, I don't know, man. I think I think they're coming out on a mission. They want to show that everybody that that wasn't a fluke, that they didn't catch Alabama on a bad day, that this is, this is a team to be reckoned with. So I like Georgia to come out just guns blazing. And I think the fact that everybody's picking Alabama to win, that just plays yeah. right into Kirby's hands. You know what? Absolutely. And, and one of the things that drives me nuts, too, is like they just think the defense is going to suck all of a sudden. Yes, did they lose a lot of talent to the NFL? Absolutely. But guess what, brother? There's a lot of talent still on that side of the ball. So that's why I've got them holding Oregon without a touchdown. I'm, I'm going to disagree with you, Shane. At Georgia's defense, I think they're going to they're going to just tumble down the defensive stats. They were number one greatest ever. They'll probably be like number three in the country this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Let's see. We got uh, we got Jeremy coming in here. Let's see what he's got for us. I think we got Justin too. I think he's muted though. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up, Justin? Man, I'm hanging out. I'm actually man. I'm over here watching this Duke and Temple game right now. <laughs> hey, it's on. Minor, 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 I can get right now. You know, I, I'm watching everything. I was watching the Michigan State, Western Michigan, but that just got out of hand. So, yeah, <laughs> done with that. But uh, Shane, man, I want to get back to what you were saying about Arkansas. I totally agree with you that getting out there and being dominant because uh-huh. really, I feel like what Sam Pittman and his staff did in the off season. You know, the strength and conditioning as far as getting the transfers in and getting those mm-hmm. guys bigger and faster, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Sounds like think for, a sec- think for a second. You got you got Ricky Stromberg. Ricky Stromberg, I'm sorry. You got Dalton Wagner on the right side. He's 6'9", 331. Then you got Trey Knox lined up next to him, 6'5", 245. Then you have Matt Landers lined up on the outside. At mm. six five, I mean that's some big boys. <laughs> you got Jaden hey, Hayes behind them at the Golden Corral. You know, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, know you have you have Rocket Sanders that's six two coming up coming at you. Then you have to deal with KJ Jefferson. I mean, <laughs> what's going on? And, and and not to even stop the fact that yes, Hazelwood and Matt Landers are new to the team, but they're not new to SE. Well. Hazelwood's new to SEC football, but Matt Landers isn't. Yeah. Well, what are you wanting to see? I mean, right out of the gate against Cincinnati, are, are we wanting to see – are you wanting to walk away uh, knowing that your, your quarterback is legit Heisman, or do you, are you looking for total team effort here? What 
What do you want to get from your uh, from your Razorbacks in Week One against Cincinnati? I want I want total team effort. There you go. I want to see the whole team get out there and play like they've been talking about all off season as a team, as one Razorback nation, and get out there and dominate with their size and their speed. They have it. Let's get it. And I really yeah. feel like people are going to be impressed when they see the Razorback size out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got 6'5", six, five, six, five Drew Sanders coming at you. I think he's going to get at him, get a lot of sacks this year. What's the, what's the score? What do you, you got for score here? I got a 38-17. Mm. Ooh, I like that. Turn that damn jukebox on. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you, Justin. He keeps showing up. No every problem, week. man. You need to get him on the payroll. That's right. <laughs> let's, see, let's see what we got from Jeremy here. Hey, guys. First of all, uh, as a dad whose son has graduated from high school football and had nothing to do on Friday night anymore, I greatly appreciate y'all giving us this uh, <laughs> to entertain us, old man. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, I'm a Razorback fan as well, and uh, so let me chime in. I agree with everything everybody has said. I think we should dominate them. I think we're a better team. I think my only concern is we have, at least last year, and this is a new team, but uh, last year we came out against Rice in the first game. It took a half to get going. Auburn, we mm-hmm. had a week by. It took us a, a half, and then we ended up losing the game. Even in the bowl game against Penn State, which we won going away with it, we were behind at halftime, I think, or at least it was mm-hmm. a very close game. And so I wonder what y'all think about uh, if this was the second game of the season. I think we dominate them. I think we still win, but I'm a little concerned now. Sam Pittman knows that, and they've been working all summer to rectify that. But what are y'all's thoughts on well, I, I think it maybe I think it serves Arkansas well that it's the first game. Just the fact that it's at home. Cincinnati lost nine draft picks to the NFL. I mean, this is something we said on the show today. But anyone short of Alabama or Georgia loses nine draft picks, they're going to struggle. And I'm talking SEC teams. So imagine how I think debilitated Cincinnati's going to be. I think they they'll probably lose their first couple games. I have no idea who they're playing after Arkansas, but. They'll be so bruised and battered and beaten, and and apparently they're facing nothing but Shaquille O'Neal's over there on, on the Arkansas <laughs> Razorbacks. I mean, it's going to be a long, long day for them. I, I don't think this is – I think this is right where you want them. Yeah. Well, I hope yeah, you're right. Just worry about a slow start um, and then not being able to come back in the second half. But I'm, I'm an eternal pessimist too, so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and being a Razorback fan has taught me to be that. <laughs> Hey, I get it, man. Tennessee for Homer right here. <laughs> We're up 50 points on Ball State, and I'm like, yeah, but there's still a chance. <laughs> well, hey, guys, I appreciate y'all. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Sammy. Yeah, I, Mike, what do you think about that? I mean, we got Cincinnati losing eight to the NFL, and – all nice. I can think about is when they were playing in the college football playoffs last year, just how bad they struggled there on the on the on the line of scrimmage. You know what I'm saying? And right. And I mean, they, Alabama was a pass happy team with the Heisman winner with all these receivers, and they said, "Why the hell do we even need to do that? Let's just line up and run at these guys." And yeah. they they did it. I believe ten of the first eleven plays it just went right down the field. Mm-hmm. Cincinnati had no answer and. You know, all due respect, I know Alabama, we got to bow down and all this, but I think Arkansas has got a better offensive line and running game than Alabama has. So, uh-huh. No, there's there's no chance, I don't think, that Cincinnati's got in, in slowing Arkansas down. It may be a little bit high scoring. I yeah. think Ar- Arkansas defense maybe is not going to be elite right out the gate. They've got some uh, you know new pieces to work with all over the field. So I, I think it could be a little bit of a shootout in the first half, but you know they'll just run away with it in the second half. I really do think. Hey, I want to ask you one of the teams we've not really talked about a little bit briefly, but uh, Mississippi State. Um, mm-hmm. what, what are your What are your thoughts on this one? I mean, we've talked a little bit about Memphis and what they're bringing back. You know, I, I just is this is there a chance that this is even a ball game? I think that possibly. I mean, I think it could be a shootout. Memphis has got a really good quarterback, a really good coach. Uh, I know everybody just wants to talk about the fluke that was last season, but flukes aside. Uh, you know, 
this is kind of Mike Leach's MO, not necessarily Mississippi State's MO, but just dropping games you shouldn't drop and then beating teams that everyone's picked against you. So, you know, it's a little dangerous spot to be such a huge favorite. I, I think it op- the line opened at like 20, 23, and it's, it's come down several points. So that would concern me a little. But, I mean, Cousin Shane is on fire with his <laughs> picks this week or this season. So that's your wager of the week. I mean, that's almost like a stone-cold lock that Mississippi State – you know, we've been singing their praises. I, I truly do think Mississippi State's going to be, I got them number four, I think, in the West. But, hell, that uh-huh. makes you possibly a top 12 team in the country. I, I think they're going to live up to it. And, you know, if they play up to their, their potential, they should destroy Memphis. Oh, I love it, Mike. I want my money back, you know. That, <laughs> that's the main thing. I want money because stupid stripes. And I don't want it come down to a penalty, so – or a lack thereof. Um, hey, I want to ask. Somebody posted something in the message board here. Mm-hmm. It says, uh, this is Thomas. He says, as a Carolina fan, I'm a little salty that our sold-out opener had to be relegated to the inferior ESPN+. Plus. <laughs> He'll be there, but he won't get it on DVR, Mike. What are your thoughts on them relegating South Carolina? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a joke. I thought that was reserved for... You know, when Alabama plays Mercer and, and Tennessee plays uh, ETSU, I mean, I, I thought that's what the the plus was for. A- every team has to play one game on the plus, and it's usually their FCS foe. But, again, I, I go back, not that I think it's going to be a, a competitive game, but there's a lot of reasons to like Georgia State going into this one. This could be the most interesting game of the night in the SEC. So the fact yeah. that they got Alabama versus Utah State, which you, I believe you've got the score 52-3. to three. That, <laughs> yeah. That's the SEC Network game. While we relegated South Carolina-Georgia State to the pluses, I mean, that's a joke. It, it should be reversed, in my opinion. But, again, we got we got to kiss the rings, I guess. But, yeah, uh, yeah I, I think that, regardless, I want to just watch it because I, I want to see all this South Carolina hype and if they come out firing like I anticipate they will. Yeah. All right, Mike. Anybody else on? Anybody else want to get some score predictions before we wrap this thing up? What about Jonathan? What, I don't think we've got one prediction from Jonathan. Who you got? He, he is uh, all in on Vanderbilt. What's the Vanderbilt-Elon score going to be, Jonathan? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Whenever he starts talking Vandy, it's always a good time to wrap this up. Right? <laughs> no, I, I wanted to talk to Shane, Homer to Homer. If yeah. There's anything about Tennessee that you found, I don't know, problematic? Anything that was exciting? Uh, like you see online, everybody's like, "Oh, it was just Ball State," and I'm thinking yeah. like, "It was just Appy State. It was just Georgia Southern." You know, dude. I'm like, I tell I you, right. it was Ball State, and I was excited to see him finally win. I was driving home from that game, <laughs> and, and I was thinking to myself, if Tennessee was playing Ball State two years ago. You know, we probably would have won, but it's been 28-24, you know? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. this is a program, obviously, that, that you know, we, we should blow them out. And as far as problematic, I, <laughs> man, I didn't say – I will tell you this, defense, I guess. You know, there was a lot of boneheaded three, you know, third down conversions. And, and obviously, they came out, you know, trying to move the chains, you know, going for it on fourth and stuff like that. But – you know, I saw a lot of a lot of mistakes in the secondary. Um, you know, and, and I think this is things they're going to be able to clean up. But I guess if you're looking for a flaw for me, is because those mistakes become huge gashes when you're playing uh, opponents that are just as good as you are. So mm-hmm. that was my my only concern. Um, but it was it was tough to find any flaws, man. I was on cloud nine. You know, right out of the gate with a fumble or a, with a turnover, and then we score one play. It's like, oh, <laughs> man, you just it just feels so damn good to watch that scoreboard just keep firing off. You know, so yeah. Uh, so I'm 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 still in positive mode. I don't want to I don't want to say anything negative just yet. But if I were to if I were to just you know raise my eyebrow to anything, it was a little bit of the secondary communication. Let's cue it up for Chris. Yeah. He's a Tennessee guy, and then we'll wrap wrap this thing up. <laughs> I think you gotta, he's got to unmute himself. So I, I'll tell everybody what wait, it's like. Wait, what? I got it. Okay. All right. So I think <laughs> Cousin Shane, you just stole my fire there. I was just like, 
It's Ball State. I'm not going to get excited. It's Ball State. I'm not going to get excited. Oh, my God. I'll win. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the one thing I saw last night, it's like we got no sacks. I need to, yeah. see, I need to see a pass rush. But uh, I, I went back and rewatched the game today. And if we ran the most vanilla game I've ever seen. Yeah, and I think that's it. I, I think we can dial up some more pressure going against Pittsburgh, but uh, I need to see some sacks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think that's part of it was they they did not want to show too much. And it, it's just there's a lot of athleticism, a lot of speed out there. Ball State was just not able to keep up with that high tempo. You know, I, I remember Nick Saban talking about it. He goes, you cannot replicate this. You know, it, because by the time you give the play to the, your 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 offense and they get out there, he goes, "You've already wasted five six seconds. Tennessee's done snapped it twice." You know, so it, it is tough to practice for, and uh, you know that is an added advantage. But I think I think going into this one, they had a game script of not showing too much, and uh, they were able to get out there, and I, that's that's what you want with against a team like Ball State. So when you go against a team like Pitt, that some people are going to have them as favorites. You know you're going to be able to come in there with a with a playbook that you've not even used yet. I got a quick question for Chris. Confidence, one being the least, ten being the hot, most. That Tennessee beats Pitt on the road next week. Dude, hey, we're gonna trust that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, they did one, but they they got pretty lucky. It, it looked like to me. I, I didn't catch much of that game, but from what I saw. Man, they got lucky there with the pick six at the end. Yeah, they don't want the smoke this year. No, that's <laughs> right, baby. That's right. Undefeated. Appreciate you, Chris. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I'll tell everybody real quick, final thing here, what it's like watching a game with Cousin Shane. Oh, we got Ollie. I feel bad. We got to get Ollie in here. But r- real quick, Cousin Shane pulled up, pulls up to the house. He's got his windows down. He's got his fist pumping. And he's got Rocky Top on a hundred <laughs> on his car stereo. And his trans That's <laughs> it. I was ready, baby. I was pumped up. We got Cousin Ali here. the cans at the children. Hey, you guys here, bitch. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I got good news for that South Carolina fan. If he's going to be on no TV, that, that'll save the rest of the nation from seeing South Carolina get their ass beat tomorrow by Georgia <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, the Off the top rope. <laughs> he knows what coming the, the ESP is trying to save them. They want they want they care flowing in from South Carolina. How how quickly, Ollie, is South Carolina rising up your heat list? Yeah, that he can keep his stupid sunglasses. He gonna need them to Go hide. <laughs> <laughs> he, he needs to worry more about Vanderbilt than anything else. He needs to about, about, worry about beating Vanderbilt one by one point. <laughs> hey, Ollie, real quick, as a Kentucky homer, yeah. rank your hate list. Tennessee one. Uh, t- yeah. Tennessee two. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm sure I'm probably in real close. They rising. <laughs> it may be Louisville. We beat Louisville so bad and destroyed that program, and they destroyed them. Uh-huh. They, they don't even care. They kind of feel sorry for beating Louisville anymore. We took. I think what we did. We took care of our ACC opponent. South Carolina need to step up and try to take care of theirs. <laughs> yeah. Which is score prediction for the Miami game? I, well, I'd say it'd be like I don't know, sixty-three to zero. <laughs> <laughs> Cousin Shane over here. Catch by 63. Oh. I love it, man. I love it. I appreciate you. God, I'm so ready, man. Ready for some football. That's right. See you guys. All right. All right. See Ollie. I think that's a good place to end it there. We're not, we're not going to get a better copper than that. So I uh, appreciate everybody showing up. We're, we'll post this like we always do as soon as we can. Takes a little mm-hmm. bit of a delay, but uh, we'll, we'll post it on YouTube. We'll post it on the podcast feed. If you missed any of it, we appreciate each and everybody showing up. Enjoy the games on Saturday. All right, see you guys. Go balls.